Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. The winner of this month's Patreon poll is the World of Warcraft Patch History Series. I talked about this recently, but an idea I had was to sort of go over each patch in the game's history from start to finish and just see how it's evolved over the years. I'm probably not the first to do it, and probably also not the last, but I'll do it anyways because it sounds fun. Being that it's episode 1, we're of course going to be starting from the beginning. Now, my roadmap for this entire series will be the Gamepedia for World of Warcraft. I only started the game in March of 2005, and even then it was quite a long time ago, so I'll definitely need the help of handy wikis like this since they've documented everything, and I trust it more than my shoddy memory if I'm going to be honest. So let's establish the base. You may get some deja vu here, since I've talked about this in other videos, but I think it's still worth covering for the sake of being complete. It's 2004, and the reigning MMO at the time is EverQuest. This brought MMOs into the forefront of gaming, and showed the potential of a persistent online world filled with players from all over the country. It inspired many games of the same genre, some were established brands such as Star Wars with Star Wars Galaxies or Final Fantasy XI, and others were completely new to the scene such as RuneScape for example. There was one in particular that people had their eye on though. Blizzard sought to leave the confines of the Eagle Eye RTS genre and enter the world of MMOs. They always said that they were frustrated storytellers because they have this huge world that they've created and they want to share it but due to technical limitations mainly, it was always relegated to the instruction manuals that came with the game. It was a perfect fit for that fantasy setting. Magic, dragons, elves, orcs, unexplored lands holding unimaginable treasures, heroes to meet, villains to be killed, and legends to be created. Thus, the world of Warcraft was born. Instead of commanding an army, Players instead took control of just one character, one that they named themselves, customized, quested with, obtained gear for, and nurtured through 60 levels of character progression. Two continents with 41 zones, two factions, the Horde and Alliance, with eight races to choose from, nine classes, professions, dungeons, raids, skills and spells, talents, guilds. It was enough to make your head spin and quite the memorable experience since, due to its popularity, it would become the first MMO for the vast majority of PC gamers. But before we get into the base game here, I thought it would be interesting to take a step into uncharted territory for a lot of people I think, and those are some of the alpha and beta patches. Yes, there does exist some documentation of the game before its 1.1.0 release patch. Now, I have to be pretty particular with what I cover here, or else these videos would be 4 hours long. For the most part, I'll just stick with the major stuff such as dungeon and raid releases, and new gameplay systems, foregoing the more detailed stuff such as class balance and performance fixes, unless I just have something interesting to say about it. Like the fact that someone was running this thing on Windows Me. If you are using that piece of crap, I think crashing in World of Warcraft was the least of your concerns. This is patch point 6, the earliest documented patch that I could find. Once again, thanks to Wowpedia here. In this patch, all of the races are finally available for testing, as well as most of the classes. That's right, up until this patch, it was still the very early stages of development where races and classes were being focus tested. I guess now they feel confident enough to give people free reign on what to pick. A little fun fact for you is that dwarf mages were actually in the game at first. They were eventually removed late in the beta because the alliance had more class and race combinations than the horde, and they were much less restricted in general. But as you know, they did eventually see a return in the Cataclysm expansion many years later. This was also the first time that the Druid class was made to be available, so that should really tell you the state of the game back then, quite far from being finished. Even Hunters weren't available yet at this point. This patch went live on April 13th of 2004, 
so that would make the Druid class just 7 months old before release. With this particular patch, all characters were actually put on hold funny enough. They weren't deleted, you just couldn't log into them, so they just sort of sit there taunting you in the character select screen. So I'm sure there was some outrage over this. Blizzard said that they did this because of the new combat changes and the addition of the rested state. What is this madness? Hearthstones? Can you imagine the game without hearthstones? especially considering how tough traveling was back then. This is really interesting because the initial rested state was radically different. Just like live, there are rested areas of course, and the more time you spend logged off, you also generate this rested bonus that gives you more XP from mob kills. However, as opposed to today where there's just rested and non-rested, there were initially 5 rested states. And that's well rested, which is a souped up version of rested, which confers a bigger bonus to XP. Rested, as we all know. You also have your normal base state, and then fatigued and exhausted. Fatigued players receive half of the normal experience from their kills, and exhausted a quarter. It takes 8 hours to go from exhausted to well rested. Wow. As you guys know, if you watched any of my classic videos, Leveling back in vanilla was insane compared to today. It could take people months just to get to 60, and without good knowledge of the game and all of its zones and quests, most people had to grind at certain level ranges because they didn't know where all the hubs were in this massive world. Mobs were harder in general, traveling was excruciating with mounts at levels 40 at 60, even being too expensive for most players, and I'll stop myself there. Suffice to say, it was quite the accomplishment to even make it to 60 for a lot of people, so to see this rested system, you can just imagine how worse it could have been. Thought that it took a long time to level? Well how about taking 4 times as long, how do you like that? Well to be fair, the level cap during this patch was 35, although I can't find any concrete proof of that. Still though, that's pretty hardcore. It's really interesting actually, because World of Warcraft was designed to be the casual friendly MMO at the time. As I mentioned, EverQuest was the reigning champion to take down, and something that was commonplace with every MMO during this time were harsh penalties to death. You had XP loss, gear loss, permanent character death, it was crazy. World of Warcraft wanted to break the mold by making a game where if you died, you didn't feel like you just got punched in the stomach and go cry for a week. But still, it looks like they were a bit apprehensive on making it too casual friendly. If they don't have those extreme setbacks from deaths, they at least want something to slow the players down and keep the leveling time consuming. Something to stop people from leveling and to maybe level a trade skill or something in town for a bit or hang out in a tavern with other exhausted adventurers and swap war stories. It's actually a really interesting design, and what a huge effect it would have had on the game. It would have been hell, but what a feeling that must have been to have 6 months of slowly leveling your character, running every dungeon, and just begging for a yellow exclamation mark to be around the next corner. You would have been on top of the world. And probably would also need a shower, let's be honest. So, this of course made Inns crucial, since they, along with cities, were the only rested areas in the game. As you can see, many have been added in towns and major cities, and you don't even need to be logged in to gain rest. Just as how you sleep, so too does your character. Well thanks for that Blizzard, at least they didn't require you to be logged in to gain rested. Ah oh, honey, I'd love to sleep tonight, but my character is exhausted. I'm just gonna call an all-nighter and hang out in the inn tonight so I can grind boards tomorrow. What, you want a divorce? Why? And to get to these inns, as I mentioned, we now have these magical items called hearthstones. You can bind yourself to any inn in the game, and when you're done adventuring for the night, hearth away to your home away from home. So, pretty cool. Obviously, this didn't make it to the launch. I wish we could have seen the feedback and what the forums looked like. Today players complain that the leveling boost doesn't take you to the max level. Could you imagine what they thought of earning 1 fourth experience all of a sudden in this new patch? 
I can almost guarantee you that it wasn't pretty, and that's because there was enough outrage to spark an immediate change in the following patch, but we'll save that for the next episode. Another interesting thing is the first light of the skill system. This is something that changed many times during the beta. With this initial version, players would earn skill points based on XP for monsters, and those points would then be spent on trade skills, weapon proficiencies, or just to straight up increase attributes. Attributes with a green bar are your character's primary, and it'll cost the least, while attributes in the red aren't as necessary, and they'll cost more. So, agility for a rogue would be green, and intellect would be red for example. So, the way that you trained weapons were through these points. Wanted to use daggers as a paladin? Sure, just put in the skill point. And lastly, trade skills are also leveled with skill points. So tell me, as a raider, what are you going to put your points into? Alchemy or your main stat? This is also really interesting to me, because this also meant that you could get every single profession. You'd only be able to use, like, one weapon type, and you'd hit like a wet noodle. But hey, you're the master of crafting. The non-combat class. It takes me back to the Star Wars Galaxies. For those who don't know, this game didn't have a class system. Every created character was the same blank slate, aside from racials and a starting profession that you could unlearn and you had a choice out of many different professions. Some were combat oriented, such as a rifleman, or maybe a one-handed wielding fencer, but you also had your fair share of non-combat professions. You had one that solely made weapons, and another one that made armor, and one that made buildings, a dancing profession where you just buff people, or heck, a politician which was for managing player-made cities. All of these were trained with skill points, which is very similar to what we're reading here. So, what may seem as such an impossible thing, it was actually feasible in MMOs to have characters that weren't inclined for combat at all. Even the weakest enemies could kill you because you're just a civilian crafter. You don't venture far from town. In terms of balance, it does have its flaws, but it harkens back to a time where not everything had to be perfectly balanced with each other, and everyone must be able to do everything. Now, why did this system never see the light of day on live servers? We'll cover that more in future episodes, but going back to this article that I showed you earlier, they did explicitly state that they don't want you putting points into something that you know nothing about. Not counting the announcement trailer, this article was the first look at World of Warcraft in the public eye. It was published in 2001, and it was the first time that the developers shared actual details of how they're building this world. I actually have a video talking about this, which I'll have linked in the description. But this explains why we never saw this system. Like I said, Blizzard wanted World of Warcraft to be the casual game in the MMO scene. So just like how things such as XP loss and permanent death were commonplace, so too was a skill point system such as this, where you would gain them slowly and then spend them in a variety of things. Attributes, weapon proficiencies, and trade skills in World of Warcraft's case. They eventually scrapped it because it was just a bit too hardcore for what they were going for. They didn't want players doing hours of research before they click that next skill, so eventually it morphed into the talent system which we all knew and loved from Classic. You only started getting them from level 10 and onwards when you got a good grasp of the game, they were refundable, and they were all combat oriented so you couldn't gimp yourself by putting too many points into cooking. Much more casual friendly. As you can see, it was actually called the talent system initially, and it looks like it would have been mainly used for just attributes. So like I said, it was all over the place for the beta. Another big change here is monster claiming. At first, it seems like monster tagging worked like it does in the current game. If you hit an enemy that someone else already tagged, you'd get XP and could still loot. I imagine back then though, you didn't get your own loot, and it was first come, first serve. Here's another interesting note with quest rewards. In this patch, they made them bind on pickup, 
or bind and acquire as they call it. So that means that every quest reward in the entire game was actually bind and equip at some point, meaning that everyone would be selling a thousand copies of the same thing if they didn't want it. A problem made worse with the fact that there weren't targeted rewards back then. As a rogue, you'd run into quests that gave you only mail or cloth armor, so probably a good call there by Blizzard. But I would be curious to see how much you could get for a Thunder Fury back then. Due to popular demand, cloaks have been made visible. Wait, why wouldn't they be visible in the first place? Who in their right mind said, okay guys, we want all armor to be visible, except cloaks, screw that. Let the players use their imagination. Players were also introduced to four new zones this patch, and that's the Swamp of Sorrows, the Dustwallow Marsh, Desolus, and the Badlands, further supporting that level 35-ish was the cap for this particular build. It's kind of funny though, because as Alliance, I think you maybe had like 20-ish quests spread throughout all of these zones. They're either more catered to the Horde, or they're just pretty sparse in general. Talk about faction and balance. And here we can see that this is when they also introduced those helpful guard directions in the major cities. Can you imagine as a new player trying to find the enchanting shop in Stormwind without any help? Is it this building? Nope. This one? Nope. Come on, I spent all my skill points for this profession, where is it? A nice reminder to not take the little things for granted. And here we can see that this is when we got the Black Fathom Deeps dungeon and the iconic Four Wings Scarlet Monastery. Again, it should tell you how early it was in development. Missing classes, missing zones, dungeons, and even guilds. Guild creation is now in the game as intended, and here's how it works. Find a guild master in any major city, get a guild charter, have nine people sign it, and return it to the guild master. And I know I said I wouldn't do class changes, but I do have a few highlights, such as mages having sleep, which they stole from priests funny enough. Oh, that's what they need. More crowd control. Thanks, Blizzard. It's not mentioned here, but I did quickly want to mention the Paladin's Turn Undead spell. Something funny was that this used to be usable on undead player characters. They were of the undead type for a while, which made them susceptible to certain spells like the Paladin's Exorcism, or the Undead Fear, or the Priest's Shackle. But on the flip side, they were also immune to certain effects like the normal Warlock Fear and Sap to name just two. You thought that rogues were overpowered? Well how about blind not breaking on damage? How about not being able to control your characters for 10 seconds while getting destroyed by one? Or thinking that you killed them, but they were actually just feigning death? Well there's another reason to hate hunters. Take our feigned death, will you? Whose bright idea was it to give the class who pulls every enemy in dungeons by accident the ability to feign so they can avoid consequences while their party members die a horrific death? Sounds like there were quite a few hunters on the dev team to me. And here's another one for rogues. There used to be a pickpocketing skill. So with this, we'd have a lock picking skill, a poison crafting skill, and pickpocketing. Warlocks were quite good themselves, considering that they could banish every enemy in sight. Well, that would have made the Gar fight simple. You kill Gar yet? Yeah, we had one warlock chain banishing all eight adds. Well, it didn't last because not only did this patch cap it out to one target, but it also gave it a 30 minute cooldown. Talk about taking a sledgehammer to a brad nail. That's probably the most extreme nerf in the game's history. And you know, why stop there? How about if you use banish, your character loses a level, and a guy shows up to your house and slashes your tires. A combat fix here is that creatures will no longer hurt each other with AoE spells. Okay guys, bring Shazrath on over to fight the next boss. Anyways, there's more stuff, such as the advanced chat system, which lets you customize your font and color and whatnot, but this video is starting to get out of hand, and I'm starting to lose my voice if you can't tell already, so I'll quit while I'm ahead. 
I hope you enjoyed the start of this long-running series. Thanks again to Wowpedia. If you'd like to read the whole thing, I'll have it linked in the description. I highly recommend it, it's a fun read. I'll see you in the next part, where we'll tackle point 7 and see just how the game is evolving in this June of 2004 patch. I hope you found the video interesting or entertaining. Like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.